Welcome back to New South Wales Government's Business Connect webcast on business disruption. My name is Steve Waite, a Business Connect advisor and CEO of the Business Centre. Business Connect is a dedicated and personalised New South Wales Government program that provides trusted advice to help you start, run, adapt or grow your small business and is delivered through a network of independent service providers across New South Wales. If you would like a business advisory session subsidised by the New South Wales Government under the Business Connect program, please call 1300 134 359 or email connect at treasury.nsw.gov.au. So today's webcast topic is digital tools and innovations for success in your hospitality business. In this webcast we hope to help business owners adjust and adapt to a new post-COVID customer marketplace and understand what digital tools and innovations can help business owners in the hospitality industry succeed. Our expert presenter is Steve Hunt and he's going to share with us some of these insights that he's gained from years of experience in the industry and what approaches he has taken to innovation in his business, including the use of new and agile technology and digital solutions across all of his operations. So on behalf of the Business Centre and the Business Connect program, I would like to share a little bit about our experts' background knowledge. Uh, so just forgive me for reading this out, but it's a very impressive resume and very interesting and we're so pleased to have Steve here. So based in the Hunter region, Stephen Hunt is the Managing Director of Hunt Hospitality International, focused on recalling tradition with a twist of today. Hunt Hospitality has multiple successful venues across Australia's east coast. With time spent at Harvard Business School and over 30 years of industry experience, Stephen is a certified professional determined to share his knowledge with the world. The success story of Stephen starts behind the bar, pouring beers at his local pub. While he always enjoyed getting people together for a good time, this is where his passion for community-based hospitality began. Years later, and notoriously known for turning a million dollar lawsuit into $1.3 million investment, Stephen has quickly become recognised as a fundraising master, raising the amount in just eight hours. Recently awarded the Australian Financial Review's top three most innovative companies of the year in 2021, in its hospitality category Australia-wide, Stephen was uh, evolved his enterprise into a capital investment and a local grassroots powerhouse. So, Steve, we're delighted to have you with us. It's an absolute pleasure. As we Thank were you. talking to before this, we've got our notes, we're, but we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a discussion. And the first question we've always started with these webcasts around disruption is, I guess, how has this been for Hunt Hospitality this last 20 months, 21 months? And, and how has it been on you, the impact of COVID on, on you, your team, and, and your business and your, and your sites? What's, it, what's, what's the, been the feel for you? What's the journey? Well, it's, it's certainly been interesting. Mm -hmm. That's probably an understatement. Yeah. Um, because we have such a strong team, yeah. we've been very fortunate to be able to sort of power through. Yeah. Uh, initially, there was, I was in the States and I was actually doing a conference in Vegas uh, about hospitality. Just when this all landed. So yeah. you're separate from your whole team when it happened. That's right. And yeah. it, was, it was interesting because on the way over um, to qualify as a speaker, yeah. they uh, basically the organiser said, Steve, you're going to need to provide all your medicals. Yeah. And there started to be a lot of serious talk about yes. getting a, a letters from your doctor about yeah. what sort of immunisations I'd had. Yeah. Yeah. And as that was evolving before I left, you know, mm. and there was a little bit of talk about COVID, so this was March, mm. I got over to the States and going through customs, you know, yep. there's a lot more questions about your health. Yep. Uh, I've been to the States many times and done a lot of business over there. So, you know, yep. I, I'm used to going through customs. Yep. And then finally, um, a few uh, business transactions I had lined up started falling over. And there's a massive firm called uh, BlackRock over there. Yes. They have 5,000 employees in one particular area. Yes. And they sent everyone home. And as soon as they did that, wow. I, um, I said to the team in Australia, in Newcastle, yeah. Yeah. I said, um, guys, get me home. Yeah, you're picking up on the signals. You're and, already and, picking up on the, the signals. And the conference that I was talking at was yeah. shut. And so literally I um, got on a flight the next day. Yeah. And as I flew out, I actually flew in in the morning and that day, from that afternoon, yeah. anyone who came in had yeah. to be quarantined. Yeah. yeah. And sort of to add to the sort of stress at the moment, I was like, I just want to get home. Yeah. And there was a delay in, in the connecting flight from San Fran home. Yeah. And 
I had to run through customs yeah. and customs were delaying. And there was a lady who got through who I'd been chatting to from Melbourne. Yeah. And she actually said, Steve, um, I'll delay them at the yeah. gate. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. It happens all the time. Yeah. Sure enough, I was the last person to get on. And there was this lady standing there talking to the, you know, the hosties yeah. going, oh, yeah, no worries, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And she's looked at me and she's just sort of giving me the thumbs up. I was like, oh, thank God. So right. if I had flown in later, I would have been in quarantine. Yeah. So you were getting a sense, a sense of the seriousness potentially of what was, you know, going to be happening here in Australia. Absolutely. And my team had been saying, Steve, they're slowly bringing in restrictions. Yeah. So, yeah. The, you know, the, we hadn't gone back to two square metres, but yeah. we'd stopped entertainment. Yes. And then literally I arrived on the Sunday and it was the next Sunday that they just shut pubs. I believe yeah. it was the 22nd of March. Yeah. Yeah, 22nd, so 23rd of March, I think. Um, yeah, the Premier the shut, shut the state down, basically. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, so, you, you, you mean, you, you, you've had experience in this industry from, from quite some time, from, you know, as you say, from behind the bar right through to managing multiple sites. What did your thinking go to immediately with regards to what tools, what capabilities have I got? What am I going to have to enact? Where was your mind ticking? So, initially? straight away, the first thing I think about is my team, as yeah. in my... Yep. The guys I work with every day and from the cleaners to yep. we need to assure these guys that the government is going to be offering a lot of stimulus, yep. whether it be at this stage we're looking at JobKeeper or yep. you know all of those yep. Um, yep. payment Systems. subsidies that they're going to do. Yep. So we basically got in touch with all of our staff and, and sort of tried to bed them down to say, look, we're going to get through this. Yep. Then the next level was our stakeholders. And one thing we've always done with our business is pay people, pay them quickly. Yes. And that builds a good long-term relationship. Yeah. So we went back to, say, our bigger suppliers like Lion and CUB and some mm -hmm. of our food suppliers yeah. and said, guys, we're going to need some help on payment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they did a tremendous job. Yeah. Straight away, they said, no problem. Yeah. So they said, we're not going to expect payment for a while. Yeah. Um, because we're cash flow positive. Yes. So we get the goods in on a Monday. Yeah. We don't pay for them for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So... Yeah. The flip side of that is when you stop trade, you've got these invoices coming in later. Yes. So it is good at the start, but at the end, you've got yeah. to a, a, have a certain a cash allowance. Yeah. So that sort of flowed in. So, um, so they were they were fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And the government stimulus was was was, was awesome. Well, so. they were so helpful last year, and I guess it's been, uh, you know, we've gone through various phases now. We have the government shifting to a state response from a federal response from JobKeeper to JobSaver and and some of the grants, but. That's, that's a navigation exercise in itself, isn't it? Look, I want to, just for the sake of, of folk listening in, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to work our way through now so mm -hmm. just just get some of your insights and knowledge. I know that you've, uh, as we said, you're one of the most innovative companies in the hospitality sector. Um, and I know that you've got a specific um, investment and a response that you put together, um, which we'll get a chance to talk about today for sure. But what I'd like to hear about from you is, um, you know, what what tech and what digital solutions, uh, you know, have you brought over time into your business, and particularly more recently, how have they been of use, and what have you done uh, in that space? Um, but also then, what what other opportunities have evolved from this? Is it is it as a result of QR codes or of uh, online service or of um, pre-booking, which which became the main. Uh, you know, at this time last year. And, and then lastly, we might look at, you know, this crystal balling and trends and, and customer sent sentiment in the future. So if we mm -hmm. can have that sort of conversation with you giving a sense of some of the, the, particularly the technology and digital tools that you found useful along the way. So let me, let me begin. So what's been the greatest challenging you feel facing hospitality business and, and what technologies and innovations do you think made the biggest impact and, and, and may well stay beyond COVID. So, you know, financial systems processes, you know, reduced operations, new regulations, what types of use of technology and innovation and innovation practices have you adopted? So we, we, we basically, at the start of the journey, we had to tear the business down. So we went from having trade to no trade. Yeah. And so, like I discussed with the stakeholders, getting them yeah. on board to start with. So that helped us yeah. uh, in terms of cash flow and then we did significant cash flow projections yeah so we kept trading at the minimum so when as business opened up yeah and i'll get onto the digitization Please. part of it yeah. so yeah um we developed a really a cash stash program so we were like right 
any surpluses of cash is going to have to be left aside, A, for our stakeholders. We also have investors as well. Yep. So our mindset became on every single cent. And, mm. and I believe it happens every once in a while when you have a, we've lived through recessions, we've lived and worked through extremely high interest rates, which a yes. lot of our younger listeners yep. Yep. won't have lived through. Yep. And economies have, you have, you go from feast to famine. To famine. Yeah. And so yeah. we've gone into famine. So, we, you mm. know, as you're in the feast stage, you, you may spend certain money on certain things that aren't really necessary. And mm -hmm. so we, we went back to grassroots and got yeah. granular. So we're in the famine. We've got nothing. We've got yeah. no money coming in. Yeah. So as soon as we're allowed to do takeaway, now our most important people are, our, are the customers, yes. so the punters. Yes. So through Facebook, we kept in contact with them saying, you know, right. reminiscing about old times. Yep. Uh, we had some of our chefs doing some presentations on food, yeah, making cocktails, yeah, and what you can do at home because we wanted to keep engaged. Yes, and then as soon as we could open up our doors a little bit, yeah, uh, which basically meant takeaways, yeah, and we we converted uh, bars and opened up bifold windows and set up temporary bars, yeah, so the customers could come and buy their food and beverage, but they we didn't do as much uh, home delivery. No, we actually wanted them to to keep in the habit of coming back to the pub. Yeah, so with your inventory systems and um, your ordering systems and your POS systems, how integrated and how much has that been a contrib contribution now and, yep. and, and, and as you got through this? Well, we've always been, uh, my family are all accountants and- I'm sorry about uh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's, so I'm one of five kids, <laughs> three are accountants yeah. and my mum and dad are accountants. And then there's <laughs> myself and my younger sister who's, yeah. um, She's uh, very successful in her own right, but yeah. we, we uh, the two of us weren't as geared for accounting. Mm. So there's always been a significant analysis on finances mm -hmm. and our business is always focused on quantity of sales. Mm -hmm. And so we link the quantity of sales with how many staff you'll need. Mm -hmm. um, we also link with um, when delivery time, mm -hmm delivery times and coordinate all three yeah. so that we're getting maximum return in terms of yeah. um, staff working yeah. at full full capacity yeah. as often as they can. Yeah. So there's a lot of hours in a, in a pub where you, you're not like, um, yeah. say for instance, a nightclub. Yep. You walk into a nightclub, it opens at 10. Generally speaking, it's busy by 11, trades till three. Yes. So they get to maximum capacity, but they only might trade 15 hours a week. Yes, One right. of our hotels trades 123 hours a week. Yeah. Wow. So we're only at maximum capacity, similar to a nightclub hours. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So we do an analysis between all of the the quantity of sales, how many staff we'll need, yeah. and then also with the cleaners on in the morning. So we we've always been very analytical. Yeah. But through digitisation, mm -hmm. uh, we morphed it all in into mm -hmm. one sort of program. Yeah. Um, which leads on to the shoeless jack, which you know okay. we can talk about. So we'll get to. So yeah. The how. Uh, how, how early did you get into the use of, of these sorts of technologies? Because like a lot of technology, often a lot of these, particularly the hardware, and, and obviously the software licenses are quite a, a capital investment. So how did you see that early and, and did you adopt early or did you have a bit of a look and see? Are you using off the shelf or are you using standard product? Um, so we, we've developed our own programs. Right. So yep. for those guys out there who and girls mm -hmm. um, who have, you know, yep. they don't have access to all of the... We've got a strong admin team, mm -hmm. um, yep. which sort of went up because I was so analytical on the figures many 20 years ago. Yep. We had our team looking at all the figures. Yep. And then with digitisation, we brought it down. So your point of sale system mm -hmm. can give you a significant amount of data. Like what? You just, well, quantity of sales, yep. um, people buying a bourbon and coke at 7 o'clock you can actually tap that into, we know oh. that little Johnny comes in on a Friday afternoon, he has yeah. his schooner or two, he's old, yeah. at 4.45. Yeah, right. And we know that every second week that he's going to come into the business okay. and he's going to bring his wife in and she's going to have a schnitzel yeah. or she's going to have a Caesar and he's going to have a schnitzel. Okay. So the actual, the information you can get out there, and it's not as expensive, like jump online, yeah. the till systems you can use, if whether yeah. you've got a small cafe yeah. or not, the data that you can extract from that, yeah. Um, can then you can uh, manipulate your pricing structure. So, wow. so for us, yeah. at ten o'clock at night, uh, yeah. and very shortly we'll be able to have entertainment. Yeah. And so people uh, are used to paying a little bit more money for entertainment. Yeah. 
So they, they'll pay more on the price. Yeah, okay. So if you don't have a door charge, then we charge a little bit more for the drinks. Yeah. And instantly it's justified because people would basically go, well, we've got a band on, we've got security. So this is part of the so cost. So this is where you're using technology to be predictive, and but to also to gather information historically. Absolutely. And I guess you can look at seasonal stuff as well, like in summer, this happens, you know, what's going to happen this summer? Well, that's right. So for instance, our menus, mm. we look at how many, when we, if we... Go, rewind back to 2008 when we had the GFC. Mm -hmm. A lot of the trends we found then were slightly different to now, but it's it's recovery. Mm -hmm. So the GFC was a financial distress. Yes. Now you have financial distress, but you also have health. Yes. So yes. go back to the financial stress. Our job is to entertain people to make yeah. people's day. Yeah. So we found in 2008 the people were drinking uh, your standard products like your VB and yeah. your Tui's New, yeah. they weren't drinking your craft beers. Okay. So this time we've sort of, we've noticed a similar trend. Right. But we've also, the change of the market and the people in 2008, that's 13 years ago. Mm. So a person who was five then, now can drink in the pub. They have different tastes. Yeah. So now yeah. we, 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 there still is the, the, the people looking out there for bargains. Yeah. So we still provide that, but we also provide the craft, craft yeah. drinks as well. Yeah. Okay. So if we can just do a little bit more of a deeper dive there. So I want to look at, at question two and, and go and dwell here a little bit. What, what do you think hospitality and tourism businesses um, are doing now and, and, and what should they be done? So we, we've spoken, I guess, about financial fitness and the starting point to survive different phases. Um, but, but trends and year-on-year -year comparisons, and you've spoken about past disruptions, but, but what is it that, that you think we can learn from now that, that is going to stand us in good stead going forward? Again, with use of technology, maybe we, it's a time to look at the platform you've created because that exercise was essentially, Shoeless Jack was a, was a, a consolidation, wasn't it? It was mm. a place to bring together knowledge, wisdom, process into one place. So do you want to just tell, take us through that? Yeah, so, so at the start of um, COVID, our ops manager who came on board, I yep. uh, used to work with Osterio, yep. and she's an outstanding individual and, and mm. crucial to our team because yep. our hierarchy is myself, uh, I have a board of directors, which yep. I'm the chairman of, then you have yep. myself, yep. and then you have an ops manager. Yep. Previously, we didn't have that, and we had 200 employees, mm -hmm. and I was dealing with all of your general managers. Yeah. Uh, we also have an executive chef now. So yeah. originally it, uh, it was too much work for me to do mm -hmm. and I was seeing opportunities that we were missing because I was getting bogged down with day-to-day mm -hmm. -day operational stuff. Yeah. So we brought our ops uh, director in mm -hmm. and she has fantastic sales experience and marketing experience, which mm -hmm. we were sort of lacking, yeah. but um, saw a lot of gaps in operational, had a lot of hospitality experience, but pubs are very specific. Yeah. So we sat down and we started talking about it and we said, let's bridge the gaps on what you know and what we need to have done mm -hmm. from the bottom. So I started washing plates. Yeah. And so I could walk into a venue and tell you how they were performing on the cleanliness of the venue. Mm. And literally I'd walk in and open a fridge behind the bar and if the fridge is sticky, they're not cleaning the fridge. Yeah. So yeah. simple things that you would notice at home, you, yeah. know, you know, when your fridge gets dirty and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, all of those little things. So yeah. we started documenting everything and then from, from pouring a beer, cleaning the beer lines, mm. washing plates, the temperature that it needs to be in the dishwashers, yeah. right through up to, okay, so that's part of it. So when your entertainment starts, but then the finance side. Mm. So how do you enter the data into the, into the um, mm -hmm. back of house systems? Yeah. Uh, your bookkeeping yep. and we developed this system and we decided to name it Jack so yep. Shoeless Jack yeah. and the name Shoeless Jack comes from a friend of mine who's a bit of a character anyway but, right. and he loved going to the pub so we're yep. like well let's just call it after him yep. um, but it's effectively it's an industry companion so it's and like you digitised it digitized so what it. were you doing before you so, digitised so, it so biz Previously, it was like old school. It's, you right. know, like, Steve, welcome aboard. Yeah. I'll introduce you to all the staff. I'll show you through the venue. Yeah. Here's all the tills. Yeah. Come over here. We'll pour a schooner. Mm. This is how you do it. Yeah. Um, there's the button on the till, mm. and we'd have a buddy system. Yeah. We actually had a, a very uh, – we had a manual established, but it yeah. didn't go into enough detail. Yeah. And so now when it's digitised, you can come on board and go through that, and it tells us that you've actually read about – the beer systems it tells us with when 
areas that you might need assistance with. Mm. And for the GMs, there's sort of like a self-audit that they do themselves that mm. comes through to us mm. on all the different components of the business. And it also helps us from the executive level go back to them and say, oh, mm. there's a fair bit of maintenance that needs to be yeah. done. So, so have you found, particularly, I guess, and we know that uh, a challenge in the industry at the moment is um, is attraction and retention of staff, given the upheaval of of the past 20 months. Have you found young people that you're bringing on? Is that is that are they do they consume that quite well? They, they, yeah. they're, they're kind of they're, they come from a different world than I do. Mm. You know, they're used to yeah. the um, digital world. Yeah. So for them, it's very easy for them to pick up and just to have a look on their phone. Mm -hmm. So it's through a system that isn't that expensive. Yeah. So if someone has a small cafe out yeah. there that might only have 10 employees, yeah. the I ordered a system, it's called. So yeah. for them, Google it yeah. and yeah. you actually build the system yourself. Wow. Now, it probably won't be as in-depth and you may no. not have the time, no. but it's something that's well worth working towards just yeah. gradually building up yourself. Well, I guess when you think about every new staff member is going to have a whole set of general principles or policies and procedures, but then, as you say, when it gets down to the detail, which is so important in hospitality, that stuff is very important as well, and you don't want to be telling people over and over, you know, mm. this is how you pour a beer properly, or this is how you keep a fridge in stock or, or clean, and, or uh, you know, other other systems and processes you're using, you're cleaning your your um, your plates to a particular standard. If you don't tell people, and you don't want to be telling them over and over. No, and it helps with um, WHS. Yeah, but it's also it's not just us telling them what to do. It's yep. it's it's the employee or the the team members' opportunity yep. to tell us about things that we're missing out on yeah so yep. they can contribute and we get a report that says you know steve yeah i've i was out on saturday night yeah and they were doing these awesome cocktails yeah and that then goes to the manager who goes you know what let's let's, let's talk to the suppliers yeah and let's see if we can try that cocktail so yeah. it's got to be a two-way street as well so yeah. anyone anyone no matter what size of operation can do this so with regards to the the, the, you know, the videoing of procedures or processes or work activities. Do you, are, you, are you talking about high quality equipment or you are you can, just capturing it? You can do it on your phone. And that does it, doesn't it? That's mm. enough to say, this is how you get, this is how you use the security system. I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. Upload, it goes onto the system. They, they can access that on their phones. They can look at that. They can, they can refresh. They can go back in and go, yeah. oh, the beer pouring, I'm not really that familiar yeah. with that. And yeah. then we can actually see that they're actually doing that yeah. as well. So. Brilliant. Okay, so next question is taking us, uh, getting, digging into your brain a bit more here about are there opportunities for SMEs in the hospitality and tourism, sec tourism sector as a result of this crisis? What, what opportunities have you seen or what do you see as we, you know, we're talking about Oxford Economics Group that's predicting probably not a return to normal conditions to 2023, 2025. Um, but, but what do you see as the... Um, as the opportunities for people? I see the, the home delivery and, and people picking up and taking home as probably... Like, so not just a stopgap, that could, that's something you see as a legitimate part of your business now? Yeah, I don't see it as being significant, but there's, there's many opportunities that it brings. It could be 10% of our food sales. Wow. So, but the opportunities that come with that is what you can do with the meal also to get people back to your venues as well. Okay. So, Steve, you might order, yeah. you know, your burger and schnitzel on a Friday night and a, yeah. and a bottle of red to have at home. Yeah. Um, but then there might be a voucher or an incentive for you to come back to the pub at another yeah. time. So, are you using uh, DoorDash, Uber for this? Yeah, or we've, you, we've, yeah. we've used Uber Eats yeah. Yeah, successfully yeah. in one venue. Yeah. We have a limited menu because you still want to get people back to the venue. Yeah. But um, the great thing about that is you can do that all day and it keeps the staff working. Mm. So, one thing that we found that was really good for our business in terms of uh, with, with, with the customers yeah. and, and the staffing was just keeping that engagement. Yeah. So part of the reason why, apart from keeping open, open mm -hmm. even through the serving booths through the windows and yeah. takeaway yeah. meals, yeah. it kept the staff coming back to work. Yeah. And previously you, you sort of said, did we have issues with recruitment and things mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. We didn't because all the team would kept coming back. Yeah. So okay. they were used to, the habit didn't change. Yeah. It might have been a lesser shift, but they mm. still came in for four mm. hours. So were you drawing back, as you say, on some of the data that you'd collected, that you, you probably got this core group of core customers that, that are connected to your business in more than just you know, purchasing. It's, it's, it's a place of, of where they go, where they socialise, where they're connected to. Yeah. So you could, you could market back to them through that good data. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, right, it was great about, having that data. Sorry. What, yeah. so, so what about the... Um, 
What do you what do you go, what are you going to invest in in regards to you know technology and, and um, you know uh, digital uh, tools or digital investment in your business going forward? What sort of things apart from from what you've already spoken about? Is there anything else you're going to invest in? Well, we there's certain things uh, we've spoken to quite a few different firms about even going further with the digital component of the business in mm-hmm. terms of linking all the systems so that we can spit out a report yeah. about hourly sales. And we can do that manually as well now. And they the talked about taking out certain levels of the team. So, mm. But we're really people focused. Mm. So we don't actually, we want you to, to it's a real balancing act. Mm. So younger people now are used to ordering. So they'll QR code and they're happy to sit at the table yeah. and order their meal and their cocktail. Yeah. And speaking to one of my daughters who's 18, yeah. she said, oh, Dad, it takes out that element of, Who's shouting what? I just sit there and go, bring me up a margarita. It's old yeah. school. I'm sure there's a lot more yeah. you know, yeah. new cocktails yeah. out there. Yeah. And she just pays for it herself and then the margarita appears. Yeah, and I noticed that technology in some venues I've been at where they've got the QR code or they've got the, the instruction of how to, how to uh, order. I guess that's going, that's going to help to some extent, isn't it, with regards to workflow? It, 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 it yeah. is. And, 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 but the other part about that is people like me, I like someone selling me what's on the menu. Mm. Mm. And I've been out with the family and they go, there's the QR mm. code, and you mm. lose that hospitality yeah. touch. So I'd see someone in, ends up at the table becoming a surrogate yeah. uh, waitress or waiter. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go, okay, you're going to have cheese on your burger? Yeah, yeah. Have cheese. And then you yeah. kind of go, I'd prefer someone to come over and say, Steve, we've got this red hot special. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. um, to yeah. upsell to me a bit. Yeah. So it's getting a, a balance of that. And then mm. back to the figure side of it, mm. when we're talking to different accounting firms, we don't want to lose, we want you to be able to ring up and have a chat to um, mm. one of the guys at work who will show you through mm. the function room. Mm. Yeah. Not just, oh, there's the space, there's yeah. the cost, do it all online. Yeah. And those admin team that do that and the function coordinators, yeah. they do a lot of other jobs. So it's, it's getting a yeah. real balance between the two. Yeah. What about, um, and I'm, I'm going to sort of talk to a couple of things here around technology would have been, which have been enforced upon us and one which was going to be but didn't. So I understand... Before COVID, um, the, the state government was looking at uh, facial recognition technology in mm-hmm. regards to entry into venues for you know, gambling and uh, for uh, you know, poor behaviour, etc. as a way of tracking. And then we had QR codes introduced. We know that QR codes are not to be used. There's privacy issues around that and venues mm-hmm. aren't collecting them and, mm-hmm. and neither is the government uh, other than for health purposes. Um, but do you see any, anything around that? Because... That was an interesting dynamic I noticed for the industry, whereby you were you were controlling the the exit and entry and the conditions of entry, mm-hmm. um, and people were kind of becoming um, uh, used to a process of, of 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 having some sort of interaction at the door, other than you know at a nightclub where you're <laughs> used to some sort of process, but for a pub, no, mm. generally speaking. So. Is there anything around AI or anything in your industry you're aware of that might develop there? Um, I think the facial recognition probably will be something that will... Mm. It's been discussed to do with gaming. It's been discussed in different states. I believe in South Australia they might be trying that. Yep. I think that that's something... um, I've even... And doing a fair bit of business in the States, they have artificial intelligence that will recognise Steve when he walks in, Mm. but you know what will come up on the till system Mm. was Steve likes a bourbon and coke. Yeah. And there's privacy issues there, and I don't know. Mm. I think it will be something. Maybe mm. the next generation will love that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Having discussed it with our team and the younger guys, they're kind of like, oh, that's a bit intrusive. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas some people, uh, my old bar flies in many of my pubs, yeah. like initially many years ago, we were taught, remember their name and their drink, yeah. and they'll love you forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure <laughs> enough, they'll be like, g'day, Steve, here's yeah. your VP. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, it, yeah, you're and, friends for life. <laughs> yeah, and they like that recognition, whereas yeah. if it's done through, I think people would be worried about the data, yeah. uh, about that information, if you know yeah. what I mean, if it's yeah. done through the... Um, but time's changed. But I, I guess um, in your venues, do you, you've got um, probably some, um, some uh, gambling activity as well. Um, and I know my... Uh, sons, um, not my daughter, but my sons are, 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 you know, like to have a, the odd punt now and again. And But a lot of them now are, are not necessarily doing in venue, you know, they're using apps mm. and gamification, you know, of all, everything. So your young staff must be pushing you a little bit around that in regard to 
well, they do like the they do like the interface, you know, in, yeah. in the experience of the business. So I'm yeah. sure there's been a lot going on internationally around around that as well. How that experience can enhance, um, you know, the sales. Well, or the, a lot of them don't like the interaction with people, no. yeah. you know. Yeah. And I think it's because they've grown up behind computer screens. Yeah. Some people yeah. haven't been to the toilet without a phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> which I find a little bit. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. I want to go to take us to another spot. So from your understanding, the latest and, and most reliable research and opinion um, about what businesses might need to be aware of or, or new customer sentiments and marketplace behaviour, what, what are we likely to see? And I'm, I'm talking here quite more immediately around, you know, post-December into, into 2023, what I spoke about with Oxford um, uh, Economics Group pushing us out to 2023, 2025. But, you know, things like pricing, um, you know, domestic travel and, mm -hmm. and what, 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 are you, what are you seeing when we look at that, 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 that larger future and, and what, are, what, are, what part does innovation and, you know, good practice play in, in that? Um, I think, obviously, your, your medium through Instagram and Facebook, yep. uh, even TikTok now. Yep. Uh, I think they're crucial. Yep. I think even Facebook, probably for the older generation. Yep. Uh, Instagram, when I mean older generation. Um, yep. I know my kids won't go on Facebook because no. they know their aunt and uncle look at that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, Don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're probably talking, say, maybe 45 plus, maybe 40 plus yep. are on Facebook. Then you're sort of going under that, you've got a lot of people on Instagram and then the teenagers are on TikTok. Yeah. Are you, have you gone to TikTok yet as a no. business? No. No, no, we haven't. Mm. No, mm. It, it. I mean, it could be good fun. I find all the social media things that we try are yeah. uh, generally pretty good fun. So, have you you've got someone in the business looking after that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is it a site by site approach or a whole group approach? Um, we try things across all of them, but mm -hmm. we try and um, we try and bespoke every experience. So, mm -hmm. what might work in one particular venue? So, we've got mm -hmm. a late trading venue. So, people traditionally yeah. go there for entertainment, for yeah. dancing, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, cocktails. Yeah. So um, I learned the hard way many years ago in that particular venue, I thought we're going to do a really good meal deal. Yeah. You know, seafood platters. Yeah. I thought I've nailed it. Yeah. We did a TV campaign. Yeah. We sold four. <laughs> well done, Steve. <laughs> and, and, and then when I was talking to the customers, they're like, uh, seafood platter, you know, 26 bucks. Mm. It's awesome. Why wouldn't you jump on that? And like, yeah. mate, we were here having a bourbon at 3 a.m. Yeah. We're not thinking about that venue no. yeah. as, a, as a food venue. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so what about yeah. what about um, the way uh, things have, have changed around people movement and, and and looking, I guess specifically seasonally. You know, we get a lot of influx of people into our region, mm -hmm. and I'd imagine for the venues that you've got, there'd be different types of of you know demographics that you'd be looking at. That you've got past trends on. How are you preparing? for that, that unknown of what, what, you know, what is the return to normal going to be? Well, so with domestic tourism, we've been, we found over the last few years, because I've got venues that, that hug the coast yeah. all the way up to Coffs Harbour, and um, we've positioned our venues to be near entertainment areas and, and accommodation areas, so there's lots of mm. um, caravan parks and different mm. things like that. Yep. And the grey nomads are filling that gap. So oh. in winter, they want to yes. be out when everyone's not busy there well, in summer. Yeah. So we've actually found that the seasonal fluctuations um, with certain specific venues, we've got one in Nelson Bay that just goes berserk over summer yep. and every year. Yep. But in winter, we're sort of targeting the grey nomads to say, okay, well, if you want to come to this area, yep. um, we've got accommodation rooms. And yep. so we, we actually started looking at accommodation more over the last few years mm. to diversify our revenue streams. Mm. Mm. And we found if we fill that particular venue in winter with the accommodation, yep. the bar and the food is really busy as well. Yeah, yeah. So the grey nomads are sort of plugging that gap, so we're not getting as big a uplift. Yeah. Because the trade in the winter is picking up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you say that you, you know, you as a business, you've used um, uh, platforms that aggregate like Uber. Um, are you using any other platforms in your business? Maybe not on on that side, but but. For, for supplies or ordering or accommodation? Is there any other platforms that you're using? Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we use one for accommodation called Pub Rooms. Mm -hmm. so, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so they handle all of the back of house. We do a lot uh, in Nelson Bay with accommodation. Accommodation's really big mm -hmm. up there. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of 
really, really good accommodation systems out there that spruik mm-hmm. it for you. Yeah. So you've got your traditional ones, you know, the ones that have been around for a while, yeah. what if, yeah. Booking.com. Um, Booking.com. Yeah. 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 They're still really popular. Yeah. But then there's systems that talk to all of them. Right. Now, it's a bit of a process to get it up to speed, but basically what it means is you're advertising to a huge market. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So once you actually nail that for the guys out there who've got accommodation uh, yeah. venues, yeah. that does a lot of your sales and marketing for you. And you know what, though? Mm. Taking away the innovation side, mm. uh, at that particular venue when things mm. were a bit quieter, we had one of our uh, team members mm. up there mm. who works at reception rang up a lot of old guests and said, we've got a deal on. So it's old school. Yeah. But we've got loads of um, people yes. coming back. Yes, traditional. Tell me, and this is just a, an opinion that you might want to give but the technology is not that far away in regard to code that you you could have a, a local or even your own group version of uber mm-hmm. um, because one of the things that is a threat to small businesses in regards to these aggregation platforms is that they basically take so much um, out of your um, out of your business you, mm. you're giving money away really and not, not seeing much for it other than access to this this customer that wants to buy stuff online. Have you or have you heard, because I know in, in, um, in Manly, mm-hmm. um, a, a, a group of, of, uh, of organ businesses down there basically set up their own platform, their own delivery service yeah, with right. nowhere near yeah. the, the fees. It was a, like a membership driven model. Do you see any scope in, in that type of thing? Oh, definitely. Mm. Definitely work, worth something worth considering. Yeah. Obviously it's on a site by site basis. Yeah. I can understand it would work really well in Manly. Yeah. Probably might be a menu log, but it's their own one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, yes. Um, because you've got critical mass. Yeah, because I guess yeah. you could use you could use the same drivers because all the drivers work for all of them anyway. Yeah. If you had a locally based one. Yeah, yeah. and um, you might find everyone's at the moment everyone's uh, yeah. really locally focused. Yeah. You know, that, that sort yeah. of changes over the years. It goes to international yeah. flavour. Yeah. People yeah. like to support local, which is at a paramount at the moment. And, and, and very much at the moment, and just around supply. So did you did you have any issues with supply? Because um, one of the things I've, 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 a couple of people I've spoken to in the industry, even your line Nathan's, at, at some point they just the sheer pressure on their systems meant that people did have to defer across to local suppliers, sheer, basically to get product. Mm. D- is is that something that that might remain in your business where you've picked up some new suppliers because of of not getting access, you know, to your your, your general suppliers? Um, we, we we do that in, anyway. Do you? Okay. So we sort of do a bit of a tender process. Yeah. So we'll we'll sign a contract with one of the bigger firms, mm-hmm. um, with with Lion or mm-hmm. CUB, mm-hmm. and then we we actually get our general managers in, and we get local suppliers just to do with beer. Yep. So yep. all the local suppliers drop off samples. Yep. And then the general manager will get his team together, yep. and then they'll tr- they'll rate all the beers. It's a great day. They'll yep. rate all the beers, and then they'll go. Actually, we think that one, and then it's up to the GM to take on that role. Okay. Um, because at the end of the day, they're the face of the business. Yeah. So they'll actually sell the product and get behind it more if it was their decision. Yeah. yeah. So um, we well, let all the team. That's a great innovation. Yeah, yeah, we let all the team get together and yeah. and, um, and, and and get local supply. And I guess the same could apply for your chefs that are, you know they're bringing local supply too. Y- you have to have your team involved in the decision making process. Yeah. yeah. Steve, we've had a wonderful chat, but I want to give you a chance. There's a few things we've covered, and you might have, might have thought of something along the way that we haven't come back to. Is there anything you want to circle back to or something we haven't covered that you'd like to, to talk to around you know, innovation in your business and, and, and where you might be heading and, and well, what you Well, probably something to do with tourism that we spoke about. I actually yeah. think that, uh, and you know, Oxford are well-respected well mm-hmm. in, in their opinions, and mm-hmm. I think in Australia, d- domestic tourism will be really strong, especially mm-hmm. for the sort of 50 plus, yeah. because you've got health scare there. So I don't think yeah. international travel will kick off for them for a while, yeah. and probably till 23, 25. Yeah. But I think domestic tourism yeah. will still be really strong. And yeah. I think you, the younger generation, uh, they're out there, out and about yeah. now. Yes. So they're going to, you know, trips oh. to Bali are going to go berserk. I think it was two or three days ago. Yeah. A fascinating and beautiful country we live in. It's easier to go overseas now than it is to go to another state. Yeah, I know. Well, who would have thought? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that'll work itself out yeah. reasonably quickly. I yeah. hope, I certainly hope it yeah. does. Well, but, I, I love the way you've basically recognised that good, sound, traditional practices in the hospitality industry are still relevant and need to be within your business, but it's where they intersect with technology that, that you've probably used innovation and an innovative approach to, to get gains and get you through this. And as we were speaking before we began this, uh, this um, broadcast, 
um, we're probably going to be having another disruption soon of some type. Uh, and so that type of practice is, is, is sound no matter what. Thanks, mate. It's All been right. an absolute pleasure. Really appreciate it, Steve. We'll get towards um, a wrap up now. Um, so first of all, um, I'd like to thank Steve Hunt. If you want to contact any of our guests, including Steve, please email us at the Business Centre and we'll forward on details for you. We'd like to again recommend the Business Connect program, which is a dedicated program funded by the New South Wales Government and delivered through a network of independent service providers. So we're here to help you. If you'd like to grow your business, start your business or adapt your business, you can do that with a business advisory session uh, through the New South Wales Government under the Business Connect program. Call 1300 134 359 or email connect at treasury.nsw.gov.au. All you do need to do is to connect a registration form and businesses can typically access up to eight hours of support in a financial year, including business advice, live webinars such as this, workshops and events. There is no cost for the first four hours of business advice. Businesses affected by COVID can access all services free of charge. We thank and acknowledge the support of the New South Wales Government's Business Connect program in funding the development of this webcast. And finally, thank you from me, Steve Waite, your host, and best of luck with your business in reopening. See you next time.